call him all your howl about Shemir Rashad, about Shemir Kadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone over well. I am not a member, however, I've entered into their labors, peace, mercy, and blessings to the sincere brothers and sisters doing this, wherever you are, whatever your lot may be. This is part three. We left off um, bottom of page three, um, top of page four. And this is the PDF, uh, Human Engineering and CC, which was done almost 10 years ago, but we're seeing the propaganda surface now more than ever. So, um, let's see. Yeah, we'll go. So, all right, page four. So, to be clear, we shall not argue that human engineering ought to be adopted. Such a claim would require far more exposition and argument that we have a space for here. Our central aim here is to show that human engineering deserves consideration alongside other solutions in the debate about how to solve the problem of the CC. Also, as we envisage it, probably something about seeing, because envisage. Or point of view. Contemplate, conceive of a possibility. Okay, yeah. That's what I thought. Human engineering will be a voluntary activity, just like Hokey Pokey was voluntary, and then they made people do it. Possibly supported by incentives, such as tax breaks, right, as we have this looming inflation that is going to continue to rise. Um, you, you know, again, the pending food shortages, uh, or should I say manufactured food shortages, um, mortgage rates going up, and uh or not yeah mortgage interest rates are going up so people are you know are kind of getting pushed out of their houses or not able to buy they may have qualified one year and then this year they don't qualify um there's all kind of stuff going on as far as pushing people to do something voluntarily such as this Possibly supported instead of sacrifice, rather than coerced mandatory activity. And, and we know this devil's uh, his mo, and very gradual. Human engineering solutions to CC. To start, it will be helpful to have some possible examples. I um, know that these examples are meant to be suggestive. We are not wedded to these particular examples, although we think that these examples are not impl implausible. Um, there may be better examples to illustrate our point. Yada, yada, yada. Mm. Okay, here we go. That's what we want. Pharmacological meat intolerance. <laughs> a widely cited report in the United States Food and Agriculture, or Agriculture Organization estimates that 18% of the world's greenhouse emissions uh, come from livestock farming, a higher share from that from transport. More recently, it has been suggested livestock farming, in fact, account at least 51% of the world's greenhouse emissions. But even by the more conservative estimate, close to 9% emissions are due to deforestation um, for expansion of pasture. So why, and in, in, in the first video, I said they they make these grandiosis or grandiose, however you say it, claims at that about these things that go on. But it is the big companies that do this, these big corporations, but they blame the little man. They blame us, the so-called peasants. It's our fault, and we need to do our part, right? Now, again, I will continue to reiterate. Everything was just fine until you got here and you got in charge. People have farmed for years. <laughs> People, and the deforestation is 
to make room for pasture. Why? Because you corporations want to mass produce things and pump these animals full of steroids. So I want you to really pay attention to how they are literally saying carbon dioxide is, is the problem. Things that have been going on in the cycle of life for year after year after year. And now it has become a problem. They can't manage any, they can't do shit right. <laughs> and everybody's paying for it. You, you're under the rule of a toddler. Or we are under the rule of a toddler. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. These people, or not these, but the people we're talking about, Esau, Edom, is the exact opposite. Clean on its head. Unwise judge in their government has no prudent men, or at least no prudent, no prudence in doing good, at least. All right, and they are not well ordered. It is a how do you put it? <laughs> it's a clown show. It's a circus in that doggone White House. We'll, we'll we'll leave it at that. Um, hey, out, out. He's gonna come in here and start that damn snore. All right. Anyway, there we go. Uh, so we talked about that. Sixty-five percent of the anthropogenic nitrous oxide is due to manure. All of these things are not these things that we need. This is <laughs> whatever whatever represents life. They they just want to kill, right? Where do we go? We got that pale horse right here. I'm, not, I'm sorry, that red horse. No fucking devil. <laughs> All right, Revelation six and four, and there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him thereon, to him that sat thereon, to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, which they have been doing, and they are going to continue to do, like World War One and World War Two, and in and, and the, the impending World War Three, um, is just masked white on white, so-called white on white crime. And there was given unto him a great sword. Remember, by thy sword thou shalt live, right, Esau? <laughs> Okay, let's see. The third seal, famine. And when he had opened the third seal, he heard the third beast saying, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he sat, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard his voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And that oil and the wine is his truth. Um, but this kind of falls in line. Actually, I'm going to stay here. We're going to stay here. This falls in line with this because they're trying to engineer a way to, for us to have, like have a meat allergy. Uh, and pretty soon people are going to be relegated to eating bug meat and these fake vegan, these highly processed quote unquote vegan, <laughs> Uh, 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 environmental friendly things. Okay, we're gonna stay on Revelation six. I want to read through that. One point five billion cows alone. Okay, and the methane a day. In addition, there are sizable negative impacts on. Water availability and biodiversity. Finally, emissions from livestock is expected to increase very dramatically since a large portion of these cows and other grazing animals are meant for consumption. Reducing the consumption of these kinds of meats. Brevity. I call them red meat. Would you choose the same reduction? Huh. All right. Let's go back up real quick. Could be used as an 
while eating red meat with added emetic, a substance that induces vomit. <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh, let's go up. Let's read this paragraph. While reducing the consumption of red meat can be achieved through social cultural means, people often lack the motivation or willpower to give up eating red meat. Nor should they have to if they were in a righteous kingdom. Even if they wish they could, human engineering could help that, help here. Eating something that makes us feel nauseous can trigger a long-lasting food aversion. While eating red meat with added em emetic, let's get that. Emetic. I'm just going to leave it at a minute. I'm not even going to type in poison. Causing vomiting. An agent that does this example of a strong solution of salt, mustard water, powdered ipecac, and ipecac syrup. That. Oh, boy. I'm gonna open another window. Stay on Revelation. We I can leave it here because we left off on six and five famine. Okay, and we're gonna go. Nope. I don't believe this is where he's at. No, 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 no. There, two and four, Habakkuk two and four. Um, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, right? But the just shall live by faith. And we are clear contrast to these people. And his soul is not upright in him. Anything that represents nature, anything that represents something real, um, Red meat is good for the body. So was a other a well balanced diet. So red meat, um, law, other lawful meats, uh, uh, and a good balance of fruits and vegetables are, are what a body needs to sustain itself. Now, if a brother don't want to eat meat, cool, don't you know you can't judge that brother whether he eat it or not. But you you gonna eat it on the Passover. You gonna eat that lamb on the Passover. But outside of that, if you don't eat meat, you don't eat meat. But these people are forcing through a me through a fake issue because right you always need a boogeyman. Soul is just not upright in him. Okay, so while reducing the consumption, right? Okay, human engineer could help eating something that makes us feel nauseous can trigger long lasting food aversion. While eating meat with added Emetic uh, could be used as an aversion conditioning in anyone not strongly committed to giving up red meat is unlikely to be attached to this option, a more realistic option. So you see? <laughs> oh my. Mm. Uh. Fork tongue devil. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna read this sentence, okay? So a more realistic option might be to induce mild intolerance, akin to milk intolerance, uh, and to these kinds of meats. So they threw out something absurd, outrageous, to make somebody say, "Well, I'm not doing that," and then they they present what they actually want to do. You sneaky. <laughs> a more realistic option. None of this is realistic, by the way. It was, it shouldn't be. Let me see something here. Oh no, we're gonna go back. No, I cannot think of the 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 wording of that scripture. We're gonna go we gonna we'll sit at Revelation until I can think of it. Mm. We've 
rewrite that, rewrite that. Okay, so God dog, what is that scripture that I wanted to grab? You know what? How about an example? We'll go here. We'll go back to that spear because that's a slick little that that is the that is the serpent spirit in its in its uh in its perfection. She also not surely die. Wait a minute. Is that you over here? Come on, man. But no, oh no, that's too far because this is this is Noah. Oh my goodness. It's descendants of Adam. Maybe it's Genesis three is what I'm looking for. A little farther back. There we go. It was. And whether this guy that wrote this article, he seems he might be Ammon or Moab, but this is the spirit of an Edomite. This is what Edom does right here. So as you can see, we're going to stick to that one part, that portion, where he threw out some absurd idea that you automatically would say, well, absolutely not. I'm not doing that. But it all leads you to what they wanted you to do in the first place, which is the engineering or uh, of a it induced intolerance. Genesis three and one. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which Yahweh power had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the of the fruit of the trees from the garden but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden god has said ye shall not eat of it neither shall ye touch it lest ye die and we understand these are our philosophies these are ways of life these are not actual fruits these are this is a way of life a philosophy and the the, the serpent is telling her <laughs> just like the serpent is telling us we have a problem. It's a big problem. And if we don't do something about it, everything's going to get really bad. We're all going to, you know, he's going to tell his horse shit. And he's like, here is a solution. We can add a poison, a light poison, nothing that will kill you. We can add a light poison to these red meats. We're doing it for the environment. We're doing it to save the animals. And don't think that there won't be a giant movement for this. Because vegans are some of the worst people I've ever met in my life. And there will be a movement behind this. And they're going to appeal to the emotions of a fool. And you're going to see a lot of advertisement and a lot of people volunteering. But for those who don't understand, eventually they're going to push it. It will be forced, just like the, 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 the Moesha is going to be forced. Uh, while eating, and this is this thing could just lead up to what they can program onto your Moesha that is in your uh, 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 hand or forehead. Slowly but surely, moving to in a, a, a complete and total control, getting inside your temple. All right, so as I was saying, you know, they they, they throw that in there. We, we'll have a light poison, you know, this won't kill you, or. Here's a more holistic re approach. You know, we can we can induce a mild intolerance, and that all that tongue that's as smooth as oil is going to uh, uh, seduce a lot of people, especially the, our simple-minded Jakes, these two-thirds. All right, back to this sentence. While meat intolerance is normally uncommon, and I wonder why it would be normally uncommon. In principle. It could be induced by stimulating the immune system against common bovine proteins. Things that your body needs. The immune system would then become primed to react to such proteins and henceforth eating eco 
friendly. There you go. Bingo. Eco friendly. There's your another. There's another thing that another buzzword that you should be looking for here uh, pretty soon. All right. Even the effects. Even if the effects do not last a lifetime, the learning effect is likely to persist for a long time. A potentially safe and practical way of delivering such intolerance may be produced. May be to produce meat patches. <laughs> oh, man. Um. How about this? Oh, that's sparring. We need sparing. Dang it. Come on now, you know what I'm looking for. Bear with me a second, I'm already on 20 minutes. Wait, or, may, or am I just overlooking it? No. Please bear with me. It's not there. It's not there. Come on. Yes, but for these reasons, let's see, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is falling, falling, the great city because she made a nation, no, no. Come on, man. I am I just having a okay, 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 okay. Calm down. Let's think. I can't believe I'm, I can't find this thing, man. God dog it, finally. Call hello, how about you, man? I'm so sorry, y'all. I know that took a minute. Uh, please forgive me. All right, therefore rejoice, ye heavens. This is Revelation 12 and 12. And ye that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And he is a madman. You hear me? <laughs> he is a freaking madman. You... Do you? None of this makes sense. This is absolutely absurd. A meat patch? All right, akin to a nicotine patch, we can produce patches for those animals. That contribute the most to greenhouse gas emissions and encourage people to use such patches. <laughs> Making humans smaller. Another more striking example of human engineering is the possibility of making humans smaller. Human uh, ecological footprints are partly correlated with our size. We need a certain amount of food and nutrients to maintain each kilogram of body mass. This means that other things 
being equal, the larger one is the f the more food and energy one requires. <sighs> Indeed, basal metabolic rate. Yes, we know what that is. For those of you that don't know, it's here in the in the parentheses. And well, and we'll all need to eat more. Larger people also consume more energy in less obvious ways. For example, a car uses more fuel per mile to carry a heavier person than a lighter person. So this is simply eugenics. That's all it is. Um... Uh, where are you? Come on, I can't be brain farting this much. Um, I'm gonna do it this way because that old thing is be messing me up. At hand, I shall kill my brother Jacob because you know who they're gonna aim this thing at. Twenty-seven and forty. Because that total control is about his birthright. He shall be like God. We'll get that next. Okay, so we'll, well, I'm going to read this anyway, because this is just, it just fits. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and this is the blessing that Isaac gave unto Esau, and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, and thou shalt break the yoke off his neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob, and they've been trying, they've been slaying us all the day long, trying to get rid of us because they think that they're going to get a birthright back, that it was never theirs to, to, to begin with. Let's see. I believe that's Malachi. Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. Malachi is uh, exalted himself as the eagle. Okay. Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. I want to go to it here. What we got at the top? Man of lawlessness. Now we, I'm going to read it from the top. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Hamashiach Yahushai, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as the day of Hamashiach is at hand. Let no man deceive you. By any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And if this, this is just one thing, but um, we've come, we're in the days now that he is being revealed, his skirt is being lifted up. We see you for who you are, and the world is exposed, boy, especially on that TikTok, where they lighten your ass up. So one, that is why you want to come down with great wrath. And two, this is just a part of your revealing. If this is not the man of sin, if you read this, you want to make humans small. You make a problem, right? Hegelian is, is, is I believe, Hegelian dialectic. 
um, you 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 make a problem, people react, you offer a solution, or you know you just have this made up stuff every time. There always has to be a boogeyman, and he, and in the people. And you get the people to believe it through your propaganda, which is a part of your sword, and, and then you offer your bogus, foolish solution, right? Meat patches. Engineering people to be smaller. That is a form of eugenics. None of this was a problem until you got here, right? Job 9 and 24, earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Okay. Uh, who oppresses and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God why because he wants to think he wants to be omnipotent he wants to control all and this is just a way of control eugenics is a way of controlling the masses let's see With all this fancy speak. We don't need all of that. I believe I can end it here. Um, I will try my best to link this entire article or link this entire essay um, into the description box. But this is, this is some wild things that you read here. Pharma pharmacological enhancements of altruism and empathy. Indirect means of mitigating CC is to enhance and improve our moral decision by making us more altruistic and empathetic. Many environmental problems are the result of the collective action problems. According to which individuals do not cooperate for the common good, in a number of the cases, the impact of any particular individual attempts to address the particular environmental problem has a negligible impact, but the impact for a larger group of individuals working together can be huge. People are generally more willing to act as a group, groupthink, and could be confident that others would do the same. Psychological manipulation, propaganda. We may be able to enjoy the sort of benefits that arise only when large numbers of people act together. Increasing altruism and empathy may help increase the chance of occurring, of this occurring. Yeah, this is this is this is wild. Um, I'm going on 32 minutes though, so um, I will end this here. I didn't get very many scriptures. I didn't get all the ones that I wanted to get. But Avaratazah, I pray that you were edified. So as you can see, this spirit is the <laughs> man. You can see the absurdities now. You have to be able to see these absurdities. And they are going to go all in with this. This is just one aspect of taking over a people and pretty much making everybody a slave. But it has to come to pass, right? If we want Yahweh Shai, which he's coming anyway, whether you want it or not. But, you know, if you want that to speed up, you got to know that these prophecies must come to pass. No, that's not it. That's not what I'm looking for. But I, I will end it here. Um, so... Please, 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 if you ain't praying, continue to pray and have Yahweh Bashim Yahshai strengthen your faith uh, because he's perfecting his sword in, in its many different variations. And um, there's only one way out of this, and that is through our Lord and Savior Yahweh, uh, or Yahweh Shai, well, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I'm just looking through this. Maybe it's something I like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's something else I want to sneak up and pull out of here. I'll continue to read on my own. If there's anything else that I find, I will do a part four. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, Shalom.